Hello everyone, Soprano Theories here and welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, if you love these Sopranos and are new to the channel, be sure to click subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all upcoming Sopranos content. As here at Soprano Theories, we here post Sopranos related content every week and be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Ah yes, the gangster genre. Mafia films, gangster films, crime films, or whatever you want to call them, are seriously one of the greatest genres in the history of cinema, as the genre itself has produced some of the most iconic and popular films of all time. Especially with titles such as The Godfather Trilogy, Goodfellas, Casino, and Scarface all under its belt. However, due to the popularity of the genre and the reception films receive by fans and critics, not all gangster films are a hit. When traditionally thinking of some of the worst gangster films, there's a few that regularly come to mind. Of course, who could forget the atrocious 2018 crime drama Gotti that was a disgrace to the legend of John Gotti and seriously put a damper on the career of John Travolta. And there's even the more recent Lansky directed by Eaton Rockway that featured everyone's favorite actor John Magaro. And depending on who you ask, Black Mask is a subpar film thanks to the film being carried by the amazing Johnny Depp. Recently, some critics and fans would say that the gangster genre has died especially with the recent letdowns in films such as The Card Counter, The Irishman, and now with The Many Saints of Newark. The mixed reviews of The Many Saints of Newark brings up the question, is it one of the worst gangster films of all time? Like I said in my review of the film, with The Sopranos being so brilliant in every way, it's difficult for The Many Saints of Newark to live up to the hype or even come remotely close to the greatest television series of all time. When I first walked out of the theater after watching The Many Saints of Newark, I couldn't really tell how I felt. Part of me really wanted to say that it was great, just because the film is attached to the greatest television series ever produced, and because The Sopranos is near and dear to my heart. But another part of me was just questioning what exactly I just witnessed for the last two short hours. And while I do think the film is light years ahead of an atrocious mafia debacle like Gotti, however, that isn't necessarily something to be proud of. The marketing for the film provided so much hype around the film, as fans were finally going to see the supposed origins and beginnings of an individual like Tony Soprano and what drove him in life to become a sociopath in the first place. Even the film's posters supported this narrative with the bold headlines that read, Who Made Tony Soprano? However, as you all know, this wasn't the case at all, as throughout the film's two-hour runtime, we basically received the opposite of the Tony Soprano origin tale. As the film tends to shine a light on Alessandro Novola's Dickie Moltisanti and how he was able to balance his work life as a gangster and his personal life by mentoring a young Tony Soprano and maintaining a healthy relationship with Harold McBrayer, his father, and girlfriend Josepina. This eerily parallels the characteristics and character of Tony Soprano, where he had to balance his life as a mob boss and a family man. The film's marketing led audiences to believe that Dickie was held accountable for the awful human being that Tony Soprano developed into throughout The Sopranos. The film does follow the early adolescent years of a young Tony Soprano, but rather The Many Saints of Newark wasn't the movie fans were hoping for, and it certainly wasn't the movie fans expected it to be. We never truly saw who made Tony Soprano in the first place, as Michael Gandolfini's portrayal of his father's iconic character just serves in the background for the majority of of the film. As most fans like myself were hoping for a Tony Soprano origin tale where we actually got to grow up alongside Tony. The film drifted away from the most important and beloved character from the series. Fans never got to see Tony's first murder of Willie Overall that took place during Labor Day weekend in 1982. We never got to see Tony playing football or establishing his relationship with Coach Molinero. We also never got to see the infamous card heist that Tony and Jackie pulled off as youngsters. That solidified their status as up-and-comers in the Mafia ranks. Michael Gandolfini's portrayal of his father's legendary role takes a back seat throughout the entirety of the film, which is sad because it feels as if Gandolfini's character wasn't really needed at all. The film's three storylines, the Newark Race Riots, the narrative of Harold McBrayer, and the narrative of Dickie Moltisanti all feel disjointed and didn't mesh well throughout the film's plot. 
At times throughout the film, the three storylines don't display any sort of connection whatsoever, and made me question the arc of the film. The film's extremely short two-hour runtime doesn't support its cause either, as just when the film starts to get good, the film suddenly ends and leaves you wanting more. The film sort of has this indie movie vibe to it. Whether it was some of the acting, camera shots, lighting, audio quality, and locations, it all sort of felt cheap and rushed. It's quite possible that this was an opportunity at a cash grab from diehard Soprano fans, who had been foaming at the mouth for anything Sopranos related for 15 years. The acting is something that seriously tarnishes the film's reputation. While the performances from Alessandro Nervola as Dickie, Ray Liotta as Hollywood Dick, and even John Berthnall as Johnny Boy Soprano are fine, it's the acting from Vera Farmiga as Livia and Michaela De Rossi as Josepina are what really carries the film in my opinion. Berthanol feels underutilized as well as the narration from Michael Imperioli's character Christopher Moltisanti, Dickie's son, as he narrates from the grave in a brilliant way. But it's the beloved fan favorite characters such as Big Pussy, Polly Walnuts, and especially Silvio Dante that didn't feel real and authentic and tarnished the film's reputation. This is especially true for the character of Silvio, performed by John Magaro, felt more of an impression rather than acting as well as most of his lines and character mannerisms came off as cheesy, and fell flat from the Silvio fans had come to know and love from the series. But the film's biggest acting flaw is that of Michael Gandolfini. While it's extremely difficult to fulfill any actor's shoes, and even more so when it's your father's most iconic role and one of television's best performances of all time, Gandolfini falls flat at what made Tony Soprano so great in the first place. While Gandolfini didn't have the most screen time throughout the film, when he is seen on screen, he can often be seen slurring his words and delivering a weak performance most of the time, as fans were not treated to this tough, macho, and masculine figure that Tony Soprano was but rather audiences were treated to this confused teenager. While I personally think Gandolfini did a fine job at stepping into his father's role, this is just what I think audiences thought about his performance. Some of my favorite parts from Gandolfini is with him and Livia at the kitchen table, which provides a glimpse into the love-hate relationship, that of Tony and his mother. In a way, the film feels as if it didn't need the character of Tony at all. Really, if you think about it, without the character of Tony Soprano, does the film's plot and storyline change? The answer is no, as Tony feels forced into the film due to his likability and being the series' protagonist, as the film doesn't even focus on Tony Soprano at all. Despite all these criticisms, the film does make you feel as if you're in Newark during the 1960s and 1970s. Its costume design and set locations are amazing. From the hair, makeup, suits, cars, and current events and music, we sort of watch the old school and prejudiced world that Tony Soprano grew up in, as this could possibly shine a light and shape Tony Soprano's personality. In a way, The Many Saints of Newark tarnishes a Soprano's legendary legacy. The film disappointed audiences in so many ways. It didn't feel like a two hour long episode of The Sopranos, which is fine because at times a movie really shouldn't feel like this at all. But this is extremely shocking because the film itself was written by the series' creator and directed by Alan Taylor, who just so happened to direct nine episodes of The Sopranos. I guess this goes to show how different and difficult writing and directing for film is compared to that of television. In a way, fans were ultimately brought back into the Soprano universe, and that's something the film does really well. It was amazing to see characters from the show, but this time how they might have looked and appeared as they were younger, like Livia and Johnny Boy Soprano. It was a thrill to be back in Satriales and hear classic lines from Uncle Junior. But in a way, without these nods of dialogue from the series, the familiar settings and characters, there isn't much that the film does in order to stand out amongst the classic Mafia films. And the film doesn't give any hope long-term-wise as to what fans thought could have been the next modern-day Goodfellas. Looking back on the film, it's certainly possible that the film carried way too much hype and fans like myself got their hopes up way too high. This to me seems natural, as The Sopranos was impeccable and every episode was done to perfection. Fans were expecting the many saints of Newark to fall into the same category and regime as The Sopranos and to fall under the same category of classic mafia films like Goodfellas and Casino. But in reality, it was far from that. It doesn't feel like a classic mafia film, and throughout its entire runtime, it never really did. Could the film have been better? Of course. 
The film itself could have been longer, which certainly would have helped its cause, as it could have provided more opportunity for unanswered questions and storylines that the film never touched on. What first appeared to be a great chance and opportunity to dive back into the world of the Sopranos and all their personalities, instead ends up being an instantly forgettable film, and mostly pointless, that has the Sopranos' legacy attached to its name. There's no doubt the many Saints of Newark touches on aspects that the Sopranos fans are accustomed to seeing, but it doesn't showcase the potential of what could have been. While in no way am I saying that I didn't enjoy The Many Saints of Newark, as it was surreal to be back into the universe of The Sopranos and to see familiar faces again, as I myself enjoyed the film, but I just wanted to address its negative reception as to why some fans may view the film as one of the worst gangster films of all time. It's just the fact that the film itself didn't live up to the hype that the media presented. We never got to see the beginnings of Tony Soprano and what really drove him to be a sociopath. Its disjointed storylines, unfocused narrative, and short screen time of Gandolfini and runtime left audiences and myself wishing David Chase had produced a limited television series instead of a movie. While the film did provide new excitement and freshness towards a series that ended almost 15 years ago, it just felt as a massive disappointment and a letdown at what could have been something special. What are your thoughts about The Many Saints of Newark? Do you disagree with my comments? Let me know down in the comment section below. For more Sopranos related content, keep it locked here, right here on this channel.